Hey guys, Shay here from Fool on a Journey, back with another tarot book review. This is the Psychic Tarot by Nancy Antonucci and Melanie Howard. This is an amazing book, and it took me a really long time to decide to buy it, and then I had it for a while before I read it, because the cover looks so hokey, which after reading it now, I know that they did on purpose. They talk a lot in their sort of intro about how the idea of tarot readers and like psychic hotlines colored the word psychic negatively. So now when people ask other tarot readers, are you psychic? We sort of collectively, we as tarot readers, immediately say no, 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 I'm not psychic. And they're saying, take it back. Say yes. Say you are psychic. Do you know what psychic means? There's a definition. Do you know what it is? You know, like, just be be psychic. What's wrong with being psychic? What's wrong with telling people that we're psychic? Which I think is super awesome. It really is sort of re-empowering the word psychic. Um, there are a lot of views in here that are incredibly unique about using the cards to sort of figure out your reading style. I have never really sort of dived into that direction. Whenever I was using the cards, it was more about like finding out personalities and like leaning, leading energies in my life. There are spreads in here that really talk about, you know, what what portion of the element of fire comes most naturally to you. You know, things like that that I had never considered and how it sort of applies to how I work with wands in general, which is really fascinating for whatever reason. I just had never, you know, thought to do that, which is great. So there's all of that kind of unique stuff going on in there. There are amazing journal pomp prompts. Oh man, I'm stuttering already. There are amazing journal prompts that really ask questions about what you think about tarot, about what you think about being psychic, about what you think about what guides readings that are really interesting to answer and I think are really important to answer if you're somebody who's really reading, you know, professionally for people, because I feel like there are questions people might ask, you know, well, why does this work? Um, which I think we've also covered in our I Believe in Tarot videos now, but it's really cool stuff. Um, just to kind of to give you an overview, here are the contents. You sort of get like a beginning. Um, you get a little bit of basics. It's very short it's only about five pages of the basics kind of explains the breakdown it explains their view on the minor their view on the court their view on the majors talks about energies um how you deal with you know what what they're sort of asking you to to get into their principles of how to do a psychic reading there are six of them which i'll go over a little bit later and then super helpful is the appendix Appendix B, the self-study guide, is all of the questions listed throughout all of the chapters in one place. So you don't have to dig back through the chapters to find the stuff, you know, the to go back and do like the journal prompts and things. Um, this particular, yes, I wrote in my book, this particular bit right here is my favorite. Using your sight with the tarot is an amazing way to pour your life into its stories. Your reality counts, and how you perceive and experience life matters. Your experience is not something you have to put aside so you find the sacred or holy path. Your human reality is your holy path. Tarot is a powerful tool in teaching us how to be fully human. I thought that was amazing, so I just wanted to read that to you guys. And that sort of really sets the tone for how they view all of this. Um, they talk about you know, your misconceptions about, you know, what it means to be psychic. Um, they make a bunch of analogies about, you know, what, what psychic power is and, and how you, what your view of psychic power is can affect how you read. Um, <laughs> quick look at the basics. There's a reading, which I will do a one of the readings for you before I'm done here. Oh, this was really good. Each one of these cards, referring to the Major Arcana, challenges you to embrace 
the mystery beyond this life so you can embrace the mystery in this life. Very cool. I just like the way that they sort of um, simplified things kind of down to that point. There are a lot of different um, exercises that are great. They talk a lot through readings that they give you from the point of view of if you are the person who's doing the reading, if you're the person who's sitting. So if you're somebody who is looking to start professional and you are sort of trying to figure out how to talk to clients, how to talk to people who are, uh, I believe they call the quarant the seeker through most of it. If you're looking for really how to engage them in a reading, this is a great book to learn how to do that. This was amazing. Um, people ask me how accurate I am. My reply is, I am more accurate than most meteorologists, though I am doing the same thing. I recognize the storm fronts and tell the possible temperature for the day, but never really know what the greater universe might have in mind. I thought that was an amazing definition for what it is that we're doing for people. Um, and then you sort of get into their principles, which I will go over quickly here. So there are six steps for a psychic tarot reading. You have grounding. Begin by entering the spiritual realm by becoming fully present through measured breathing and inward focus. The intent. Seek the truest need or focus for this reading through clear introspection of motives and polariz prior prioritization. Sorry. Uh, form. Choose the cards and spreads for the reading. Synchronicity, gather all energetic messages and insights, ideas, and patterns. Closure, gather all the cards and give thanks. And integration, after a brief time for further contemplation, decide how to bring the relevant insights into everyday life. And those are also gone into more deeply. Each gets a chapter, so there's definitely more going on for that. Um, and then you get into, they just give you pictures of the cards so you have an idea if you don't have a deck. And then the study guide in the back, which anytime that there is a question that could be expanded upon into some kind of like journal entry or exercise, they put it all in the back for you so you can find them pretty quick. Um, but I think this is incredibly valuable. I think this is a great book, especially if you're just looking for something that's just a little bit different. Um, I definitely highly recommend. I love this little quote at the back here. Stories tell us who we are. Readings help us change the stories. So you can kind of see what their perspective is from that. Um, I really can't, I can't recommend this one enough. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I just got done, I've only done a few of the, tar um, of the like journal, um, the like tarot journal prompts so far, but they were excellent when I was doing them. And then I really kind of put them down and, and, and didn't keep doing them because I wanted to finish the book so fast. And I wanted to go ahead and do a sample spread for you. So one of my favorite spreads that I talked about earlier was when it sort of was explaining, you know, finding out how you work with each element, which I thought was really, really fascinating. And so just sort of an example of that, you divide out just the minors, no court, no majors. So they tell you which suit they associated with their directions i don't really think that matters unless you're somebody that has or if you already have an association with which suit belongs to which direction go with what works for you the way that they have it is pentacles cups swords and wands whether or not you feel like fires the south and pentacles are the north i i doubt matters but the way that they talk about doing it is so you divide them all up so these are all just the wands and then you just sort of shuffle and then what you're asking is what part of fire comes natural to me and what part of fire is a weakness for me or do I struggle to work with? And once you're done shuffling, you would say what comes natural is on top. So what comes natural is then the six of wands and then your shadow, what you struggle with is the bottom. So it would be the four of wands and then you would pull those and say there is my struggle and there is, you know, what I excel at or what comes naturally and then what I struggle with. And you would do that with all of the suits. And I felt like that was one of the ones that, to me, 
was the most different, was the most unique, was something that I really spent a good amount of time sort of journaling with and and looking into just because I had never had that sort of put in front of me before it had never occurred to me to really work directly with the elements like that and see how I relate to them um, so just a, an idea if it's something you want to try also sort of just to give you another idea of what's in the book if you're interested I definitely again highly recommend uh, if you have any other questions feel free to ask in the comments below and as always you guys can email me for free readings at foolonajourney at gmail.com thanks for watching